Good day fish tankers. Today we take a look at fish for Africa thanks to our roving cameraman Geisbert van Wilgendoren. So let's take a look at what they have. Okay, this is a massive facility. You can see some big aquariums standing here on the outside. And as one goes in, there's this display. And look at that beautiful Jaguar cichlid. I'm a big fan of these cichlids. Look at those markings. There's a Frontosa, which is a Tanganyikan African cichlid there in the background, and another big Jaguar. Love those patterns of these fish. Never actually kept them myself. But uh, I sometimes think if I'm going to do that big Oscar tank again, maybe I must go for Jaguars. And here's quite a few other cichlids. Those look like Jack Dempsey's from where I'm sitting. And I think there at the back I also see uh, Green Terra. The obligatory glowfish. Where it's in the hobby to stay. I'm not the biggest fan of these, as you all know by now. There is a, a Deacon or a Severum, as you call them there in America, and there's a Sol Solvini at the back. And some silver dollars, as I've said, great diver fish for tanks with bigger fish in. Just to keep them away from your plants. And a bicolor shark, I much prefer those to the rainbow sharks. Just keep them on their own, uh, meaning with just a single member of a species. Myra cichlid with a big pleco. And here we have some Mickey Mouse platys because of that pattern on the base of a tail. And there is a male pole garami. I've done a separate video about those fish. It's a nice bigger garami for a community tank. It doesn't get as aggressive as your blue Cosby or your free spot garamis. You see a little Cory busy at work and some barbs. You see some tiger barbs mixed in with spanner barbs. And I think there's some Odessa barbs there as well. And a red line torpedo barb or a rose line shark or a denizen barb. I've got many different common names at the back. There's a moonlight garami. Moonlight garami is also a nice bigger garami like the Paul Garami for community tanks. Some Cory's, female beta. Here's your free spot Garami. They get a bit more aggressive than the Paul Garami, I find. Quite a bunch of them over here. One of those understated fish, but they become nice when they're bigger. Discus. Main thing of discus is I find keep them warm, 29 degrees Celsius. That's where you want the temperature. And when they're young at that stage, they need regular feeding a couple of times a day. My favorite knife fish, a black ghost knife fish. I believe it's also a mormorid. Um, they emit a faint electric signal and some albino tiger oscars and some crebensis as well i haven't colored up yet it's probably a batch that's been bred by hobbyists or in the store guys please take a moment and smash that like button it'll help us to com continue doing what we're doing there's the jaguar cichlid again I've got a lot of jaguars in the store, it seems, so I think they probably have a breeding pair there somewhere, churning them out in a permanent supply. And that, I believe, is a leopard catfish. Look at the patterns on that guy. Very nice looking fish. Shoo, and a pretty price as well. You gotta make sure you know what you're doing when you buy that and the arowana store on the small side 
but they need big tanks and of course the obvious thing that people often forget the tank has to be sizable from front to back as well because they need some turning space and smaller silver dollars there once again a bunch of jaguar cichlids that's why i suspect they're breeding them over there and some fellas and Malawi cichlids again and strawberry peacocks and that stripey one Elenachromus auratus unless the name has changed you can let me know in the comment section and these are paradise fish sometimes called paradise karamis and uh, they were one of the first fish kept in the home aquaria after koi and uh, that was ponds more or less and goldfish paradise fish were one of the first guys leave a comment as we look at the balloon mollies do you like balloon fish these fish that sort of been line bred to create these shorter thicker bodies and here you have more balloon fish red balloon jewels these, this is an african cichlid you can see that they have short these have been line bred to give you not as short as a balloon mollies but shorter bodies and these discus we used to call Marlboro red the color variety in the old days because of a color on the Marlboro cigarette packets nowadays it's something else and baby Oscars and more discus who has kept discus before and was it a yes or no for you And these, I believe, are some rainbow cichlids, juveniles. Guys, please take a moment and share this content with a friend or to a fishy group. We we'll greatly appreciate it if you help us get it out there. And these are some golden panchaks. It's a kind of a killifish. It's a bigger killifish, much bigger. And these, I, I kind of like the look of these fish. And here's another thing you don't often see. And this is a night goby. I believe they like more water more on the brackish side. It's a unique looking fish with those spots. I've seen a channel on YouTube, Tazawa Tanks, he keeps swimming with his puffers, if I remember correctly. That uh, Hawaiian guy that's now, well, I'm not sure if he's Hawaiian, but he's now also part of Aquarium Co-op. And the Panda Corridoras. And this is a Corridoras that can go in cooler water. As long as it, it's somewhere between 20 and 22 degrees Celsius, room temperature mostly, they will be fine, but not cold water. There's a German blue ram. And some golden angels. There's a quay there as well, quay angel. Daniels. No, spy some rainbow fish there as well uh, indigo rainbows or lake kutubu rainbows is what we call them over here they grow into really nice bigger fish make for, makes for a great display of busmanis and red rainbows and some quarries corridoras catfish many many different species that became sort of a, becoming a thing now you, you get people sort of specializing in them and the same is algae eater of course great for black beard algae and any kind of uh, hair algae or filament type algae and dwarf karamis as well those are the cobalt blue dwarf karamis if i've got the color variety right and these are royal whiptail catfish, Farnoella, I think is the first part of a scientific name. They are sort of algae eaters and they're very, very peaceful and a very underrated community fish in a planted tank. The bicolor or red tail sharks again, just keep one specimen in the tank and then they make a great fish for your more larger, semi-aggressive communities, you know, whether they're silver dollars or tinfoil barbs or or maybe even, you know, the bigger cichlids, dwarf neon rainbows. It's a rainbow that doesn't grow that big. 
and the Bangassius cats. They seem much more popular in Gauteng as well, you know. The Redis and Shark Bangassius cat is what I'm used to calling them. But they're also really, really big fish. And these Bala sharks also get big, but not as big as those Bangassius cats or Redis and Sharks. So you basically, for those cats, you almost need a tropical pool, nice rosy barbs. You can see nice color in these, there's males and females there. Some you see have longer fins. Very hardy, lively fish. Here we have a tiger barbs. I believe these are glowfish, glow tiger barbs. Unless it's some natural greenish morph, but I think that's a glowfish version of it. Could be wrong. The golden algae eater is a color variety of a Chinese algae eater. Now, I'm not a fan of a Chinese algae eater, although these do look rather nice. But remember, they can get aggressive, so maybe try and put them with a tiger bobs or something else that can punch back. And lovely tiger bobs. I remember I had them as a student. Lovely fish, obviously fin nippers. If you have fish with long fins, it's a no-no. But tell me if you've kept tiger bobs and what were your experiences with them? Blatties. Now we're on to the guppies. If you don't want lots of babies, just keep males. And if you have both sexes, make sure, you, I would say, have three females for every male. Two females to a male is sort of a standard, but I would say more females even, because those males keep going after the females. They're worse than teenagers on prom night. Here are the female guppies. And uh, good news these days, I find the female guppies on their own are also quite colourful. Back in the day, it used to be that the female guppies were all sort of drab, greyish in colour. Nice looking goldfish, some comet goldfish there, and more of a common goldfish variety, more platys. Facebook tells me there's about a hundred, uh, upwards of a hundred aquariums here. So one can only do the highlights, otherwise you'd be watching YouTube forever. More guppies. And some old school air driven filtration. Some black and white skirt tetras, black widows or white widows as we call them here in South Africa. And head and tail light tetras or beacon tetras. Somebody I knew had, when he was a kid, he had one of these in the aquarium. It was the only fish that was still surviving and just kept living for years and years. And he fed it, uh, every day he swatted the fly and fed it to the tetra and it became about double the size of what they tell you in the books they can become. Some prestellas and there's a double-tailed beta or Siamese fighter. Galaxy Rasbora or Celestial Paul Daniels. Nice little fish, they look like tiny little trout. I've battled in the past to get healthy specimens or specimens that stay healthy. They tend to get columnaris or sometimes those hollowed out bellies. But these look in great condition to me. And cardinals. No understated beauty, no subtle beauty, they're just beautiful, plain and simple got colors that rival marine, marine fish. It remains my favorite tetra. Some red eye tetras, and I think I spy some, uh, was it silver tip tetras that I see there? And um, some very nice saw tails. Nice looking ones. As I've mentioned, saw tails jump. So keep a tight lid on that tank. Sawtails, killifish, betas. Those are big, big time jumpers. Kohako swords. And some mollies, white mollies. Some tiny rasbauras. 
I have mostly smaller fish, but when they get really nano size, you know, I'm now at the point where I need reading glasses, and then I've got to put my reading glasses on to see the fish. So I don't know how nano I actually want to go. And neon tetras. These are good looking neon tetras. Sometimes the quality of neon tetras become very low and then sometimes you find great quality like these. Black neons. Very underrated. Great for a planted tank where your focus is more of plants and you put a big show of them in and it makes a great display. It sets off nicely against an aquascape. And those uh, look like some Colombian red fin tetras and some either red phantom or serpe tetras, more platys. And of course for white cloud mountain we know. Best beginner fish to my mind by a long shot. They can even go and uneat at the query if they don't need a eater. And back to the mollies. I think with live bearers always, I made a separate video about live bearers somewhere in the channel. And here we go to the black emperor tetras. But as far as live bearers are concerned, they don't, in my experience, like soft acidic water. Sometimes if they're born in it, it's a different story. But especially mollies, guppies, they need a bit of alkalinity in the water. So if you have soft water coming out of a tap, soft acidic water like I have here in Stellenbosch, put some crushed coral in the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the mesh bag in your filter or just in the substrate, that'll also be fine. Or there are products that you can use like alkaline buffer from Seachem. And now we get more around the planted tanks. And these are baby jaguars. Yep, somewhere there's something or someone churning out jaguar cichlids. Plants, different potted plants. And this is a nice concept. It's got Velisneria like uh, my tanks have, but there's not a background. So here's a nice idea if you have a tank that's sort of a room divider, and you plant the vallis near you, it does have a nice effect looking through that vallis towards the other side, I think. Cherry bulbs, Siamese algae eaters. There's more plants in the tank that you could build into a little paludarium, the golden version of a white cloud mountain we know. More planted aquariums. Planted aquariums are definitely a trend. You know, now that we know more, we can do better with the plants. But I think besides carbon dioxide substrates that have nutrition in them, like the dirt that substrate, but also aquaswell was a real game changer. And nice to see some bigger angels here, nice variety some black angels just a while back there as well and here we are with the shrimps and you know these bubble up sponge filters are ideal for shrimps because they like shrimps like something to sit on you know they like to have dig their little legs into something their little feet so you'll see they often ship them in pieces of netting and the sponge filter gives them a place to sit and they also like to pick over the film the biofilm and whatever food leftovers collect on the sponges. There's a double sword guppy. And yeah, now yes, there's some cold water fish as well. A big selection of goldfish as you can see here. All your usual suspects for comets, stuff for your pond. And then there are sort of indoor ponds for the fish. You can see the big nets and the aquariums and outdoors there are koi ponds just look at the, these nice koi fish who of you keep koi how many koi keepers are they looking at this channel i'd be interested to know we're not really 
about koi. I can't claim to be an expert about koi. I've never kept koi. From my days in the aquarium trade, I know a bit about koi. Just a little few, few things. And you can see these are good quality because their bodies are pinched and they've got what, they, what you call luster that you can see in the sort of, um, sort of reflectiveness of their skin. That's referred to as luster. And they're in great condition and they're big boys here. I think it's going to cost you a pretty penny to get these koi fish. And they, they sort of nice wet pets to me. They come up to your hand and eat, just like that one was looking for a snack. And off he goes again. If I ever had a big house or a big swimming pool, I'll change it into a koi pond. Then I'll start going into this. Okay, guys, that is it from me as we look at all the hardware and dry goods and aquarium food, please remember to subscribe. And until I see you again, remember to take good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.